Hello and welcome to T3. One of the many ways Make It Work helps you achieve a stress-free digital lifestyle. I'm Jeremy Anticoni, and here's what's trending. After Steve Jobs' keynote yesterday announcing the new features in iPhone OS 4.0, we went and downloaded our developer version. And here's some feedback based on our first day of use of it. The interface is revamped and animations are a lot sleeker, much like the iPad is. Multitasking is very cool. Just like Steve Jobs said, not every app can multitask. Apple apps certainly can. Music streamings like Pandora and voice over IP such as Skype are able to, but developers will need to add multitasking capabilities to their apps. As you use it, any app that you close goes to the multitasking dock. It's very easy to access. Simply double tap the home button and you'll be able to switch between the apps that you have open. Folders are also implemented, which is a highly requested feature. I've got a lot of different icons on my screen and being able to organize them and consolidate them is a lot easier. What you're able to do is take those unused app or frequently less used apps and put them into their own folder. To do so, you hold down on an app and drag it on top of another one. Give the folder a name and you're done. Another feature that's been long overdue that makes managing multiple email accounts a lot easier is the unified inbox. And it's great for those that are switching from Blackberries because it's the same format. All of your inboxes are accessible through one master inbox. Email messages are also threaded, so it's a lot easier to follow the, the conversation. Other features that are cool are the five times digital zoom on the camera, Bluetooth keyboard support, and spell check. It's about time. With all of the new features and functionality just announced for the next version of the iPhone software, there's a lot of buzz about the next version of the iPhone hardware. It might be called the iPhone HD, but of course that's speculation. We're expecting to see a faster processor, such as what's used in the iPad, the A4. We'll also expect to see a better display to be able to compete with the Sprint Evo 4G and the Droid. Probably will be an OLED, an organic LED screen with higher resolution. Long been overdue is a front-facing camera for video conferencing so that you'll be able to take pictures with the back camera and do video conferencing with the front camera. And of course, there's been rumors that this may be available. We'll also see a more efficient battery and hopefully we'll see availability for the iPhone on Verizon's network. Not surprisingly, the iPad is making it very difficult for other tablets to gain traction. The Juju tablet had 90 pre-ordered and almost 20% of them were returned. And while it was a capable product from a startup company, it seems like it's already bitten the dust. The Juju had lots of features that the iPad doesn't, like an, a USB port, an SD card slot, and a beautiful and responsive display, but it seems like bad timing for the company to release their tablet right around the same time as the iPad. The Enzo ZenPad was a cheap and capable looking Android tablet, but the company's support and eBay auctions have vanished. They were only selling the product via PayPal and now have been unresponsive to customers. Some advice, if you ordered one of these, get a PayPal refund as soon as possible. It seemed like both of these devices were doomed to bad timing. If I was a startup making one of these devices, I would wait for the iPad to come out and then try to market a device that would be capitalizing on features that the iPad is not offering. Thanks for tuning in for T3. For tech trends and more, visit makeitwork.com. I'm Jeremy Anticoni, and that's what's trending.